Hi, we're in the fifth set of the 1984 French Open final between Yvonne Lendl and John McEnroe. McEnroe won the first two sets, and Lendl won the third and the fourth set. And yes, I am in my messy garage right now, but I won't bore you with the details for that. Uh, it was a good set. I thought it was well played. Uh, it was probably the even most even set, actually, of the match, arguably. Uh, they just traded uh, traded holding serve throughout the, the set. Uh, generally, McEnroe had a more difficult time holding serve than Lendl, which was different than most of the most of the match. Um, but this was really the set where um, Lendl's conditioning uh, made a big difference, his backhand, and uh, again, McEnroe's uh, inability to get his first serve in. And just as a general thought to the whole match, um, always looked through it and always read about it through the lens of McEnroe. Uh, he let it get away. It was a disappointment. Biggest disappointment of his career. And usually the narrative focuses around McEnroe and the opportunity lost, uh, which, you know, you can spend time talking about. But really, um, what I realized after watching this again, a little bit more objectively than when I was 11 years old rooting for McEnroe, was really that Lendl deserved to win the match. And uh, by the same token, McEnroe really didn't work, deserve the match. Uh, the reason why um, Lendl deserved it was, uh, for the most part, his backhand. <laughs> he just had a great backhand. He had so many winners. Uh, I would say second reason is his conditioning. And third was his uh, ability to kind of change tactics and come up to the net sometimes, hit some lobs. Uh, not a real diverse game, but he played uh, well enough to win. And why didn't McEnroe win it? Just couldn't get his first serve in. He, um, uh, his conditioning and um, just not being able to hit the shots that he needed to at the key moments. Um, just to get into the third set uh, briefly, uh, I already talked about all the opportunities he missed in the third and the fourth set, but he had Lendl double break point at 3-3. And he made um, a long forehand, and then he hit a short a forehand in the net. And then Lendl hit a, a, a volley winner. And when they got the deuce, Lendl hit a volley winner, and then a forehand winner. So again, uh, those would be the top three reasons why I thought Lendl won, why McEnroe lost. Um, they continued trading serves. McEnroe had a moment where he complained about the photographers in the pit. Um... The, another thing I loved about the match was just all the variety of uh, shots they hit. They could hit forehands, cross court, um, down the line. Same thing with uh, backhands. They, McEnroe hit some drop shots. Lendl hit the lobs. Uh, in hindsight, too, I really noticed that uh, McEnroe, who's great at lobbing, I remember he used to lob Borg, uh, especially in the 1981 U.S. Open, and uh, he lobbed him a little bit at Wimbledon. Never seemed to try a lob against uh, Lendl when he had a, ch a chance. He would try to hit these uh, passing shots, and most of them he hit into the net. It seemed like he had some opportunities, but just, you know, sometimes when you're playing tennis, those things just don't occur to you. Um, Lendl uh, held serve much more comfortably in the set. And then, of course, um, we got down to, got up to 6 5, and um, Lendl broke him and won the match. So that was it. So, uh, it was a good set. They both there was a lot of really good rallies, and uh, Lendl seemed to win most of them. So, um, one other thing I noticed too that um, cost McEnroe was and it's related to his conditioning issue was he didn't uh, come to the net enough. When he did, he did well, but sometimes he would just kind of stay back and be a little bit lazy with his footwork and try to hit half volleys or kind of just wave at the ball. He was just so tired. And another thing that was kind of annoying about the fourth set was how long he was taking between points. Uh, just really trying to drag it out and uh, conserve his energy. But it almost seemed like better. He would he would have been better off just to keep playing through and reduce the amount of time on the court. So um, once again, McEnroe foiled in his chance to win the French Open and to be able to win three majors on uh, uh, three different sur surfaces. He um, ended up winning seven majors over his career, four U.S. Opens, and three Wimbledons. 
uh, Lendl. Uh, this was his first major, so uh, congratulations to him. He had lost his first four. He ended up going on to win eight majors and um, probably becoming the most prolific player of the 1980s. Even though he wasn't uh, exciting or charismatic or anything like that, uh, if you just look at the records and the accomplishments, you'd, you'd probably have to uh, give it to Lendl over McEnroe, Connors, Vlander, Becker, Edberg, everybody uh, that kind of played in throughout the 80s or through portions of the 80s. So great match. It was real slugfest, a uh, real tough match to watch, but I'm glad I could cut it up into pieces. It was much more bearable that way. And uh, one of the best, if not the best, French Open ever in my mind. Um, and uh, happy to see this match uh, seems as great now as it was then.